Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the sacred magic of the Kabbalah and how it relates to Ayapet Go 2. In the Hebrew alphabet, consisting of 22 letters, are the fundamentals of Kabbalistic knowledge. Each of these letters is composed of tiny flames joined together in various combinations. The number of flames to each letter ranging from 1 to 4. With the letters of this flame alphabet, the student of the Kabbalah is first concerned, for they are the basis of the great fireborn doctrine. So the Yod, the great fire flame, has a numerical value of 10. According to the Jewish sages, the Yod represents the world to come and completeness. So this scene here could be taken as the great fire flame being born into the universe. Masons have accepted this symbol as that of God. These fire flames represent living forces among the creative hierarchies which we know as the vitalizing or life-giving forces of nature. According to the ancient wisdom, all numbers came forth out of an Ain Sof, the unknown, the dot, the absolute. The one is the primary manifestation, and as such we are going to consider its power, first in its descent out of the dot, and then its ascent back into the nature of the dot. This is symbolized as the monad, and the monad refers to the supreme being, the divinity of the totality of all things. Manifesting out of the formless dot, the beginning of all things is a state of oneness, which man calls unity. So this is what the number 10 means, the I being unity and O being the no thing. The number one also governs the reason for man's labour here. There is but one motive in all his works. There is but one end to all his labours. He must seek to unite his intelligence with that of his creator, the Ancient of Days. This he does by adjusting his organisms to the body centres of the macrocosmic man. This sequential adjustment of internal centres of consciousness with eternal qualities we call evolution. So the way Bush points up to the evolution chart at the top, could be taken as a representative of what they want to achieve, being illuminated, being godlike almost. The One in its return to unity. The one source of life and the first principle thereof manifests itself in the world as a multiplicity. The one cause, the eternal unit, is diversified into the millions of existing forms, all of which bear witness to the infinite diversity of powers concealed within the structure of the primitive one. Since the unified, since the unified causation expresses itself as a multiplicity, we recognise it as a stream of ever-evolving individualities pouring out of the abyss of space through the one and into the manyness. So this is represented in heliofront by the I.O. and the dot transposing itself over towards the O. The I or unity, returning to the no thing. When he returns to his source again, however, man has the circle of a completed cycle to add to the extended point of first expression. This is symbolized by the number 10, which stands for the completion of the first round, for it is the one and the round, or cipher. It means that the one has returned to itself after circumscribing the circle of manyness. In the oneness we find the ultimate of all manifestation. All diversity is destined to return again to its own source. Therefore it is said that the life of the great outpouring has its beginning and its end in its own centre. All life is consequently symbolised by a great circle which returns again to that from which it came, a serpent with a tail in its mouth. The power of the worm extends beyond this world. It reaches from here all the way back to where it came from. Where? The source. The number two is symbolic of the dual system of human thought which views everything either from the standpoint of opposites or comparison. 
The one outpouring reflecting itself in matter is called the two. This is the first negative number for when divided it leaves no remainder. All even numbers are called negative. Two is said to be the number of unconsciousness because a single spiritual power is broken or its flow impeded. It is also referred to as a number of contention because the two extremes of nature are always seeking mastery one over the other. Too often man fails to realise that domination on Domination on the part of either means destruction of both, for in slaying its opposite it slays itself, since one pole cannot manifest without the other. So in this scene here we see a broken yin yang symbol, which morphs itself into a monad. It could be taken as the jewel destroying itself, and the one returning to its source. The number three is symbolised by the triangle, for it is the number of outpourings which radiated from the divine being in the process of creation. Its basic principles are spirit, soul and body. This trinity manifests in the world of form as thought, desire and action, which are the concrete attributes of the threefold divinity. Three is also the number of the blended opposites, for out of the duality of the two there is born a child partaking of the natures of both its progenitors but being a manifestation of neither in full. This secret formula for this accomplishment has come down to us in the secret of the Philosopher's Stone. The number three is symbolic also of balance or equilibrium, for the triangle is equilateral, well the one that I drew wasn't, but let's pretend that it was, meaning that all of its sides are of equal length. With its point upwards, it represents human aspiration and consciousness rising out of form to union with its divine source. With its point downwards, it represents the triune powers descending into matter to mould it into a semblance of the trinity of spirit. So if we go back to the Virgin Isis scene, Osiris is the threefold aspiration rising up and the volcano at the top, Solomon, is the threefold divine descending down. The number four shows the relation that its goddess bears to the earth and its elements. It is also the symbol universally accepted to represent the path of accomplishment and the labours to be done. For being the number of form and hence of earthly things, it is represented as a cube or stone within which life has been imprisoned. Five is the hand of the philosopher. It is made up of the four elements plus spirit, which is like the coordination between the human thumb and the fingers. Cooperates with cooperates with the four elements but is not with them for it works by opposition. Five is called the Christ and in the tarot is the Hierophant or the priest because it is the spirit of man rising from the tomb of matter. The geometric form of the condition is the pyramid in which one corner rises from the four corners of the base. So we see inside this famous pyramid from Kazakhstan we have the five inside the five, the one returning to the source. When the four elements have become the pedestal upon which the spirit stands, a city upon a hill and not with stone walls which close it in, then man has reached the spiritual number of five. Man's development is the harmonising of his centres of consciousness with the external planes in the universe by attuning the lesser self with the greater self. The tiny spark thus gains the ability to speak to its parent, the great spark. As we revive and harmonise this cross through right living, then the one shines out and a man becomes the divine five. Man consists of two interlaced triangles, the threefold spiritual body and the threefold form. Six is sometimes called the number of materiality, for it is symbolic of the union of spirit and matter. It really becomes the second symbol of equilibrium. The two triangles are symbolic of fire and water, and when these two are interlaced, they are said to stand for the philosopher's diamond. They also stand for the interblending of all pairs of opposites within man's own being. The figure six is a line descending into a circle. The coil with the line descending is symbolic of the serpent's coil, which descends in nine and ascends in six. Therefore, in the case of six, the serpent is returning upwards to the power which was its source. Seven, the immortal number of the Mosaic law is called the day of completion, for it is said by the ancients that all things were made in seven days. This is true when understood from an esoteric standpoint. All life is divided into seven parts, and the passage of consciousness through these seven divisions constitutes what are known as the days of creation.
The pathway of human evolution winds in a serpentine fashion in and out through these seven centres, finally uniting them as beads upon its gleaming golden thread. Eight is the divine symbol of vitality. It is the symbol of the mystic marriage and of spiritual and physical regeneration. It is the great current without an end passing up and down through man as the golden band of light. The eight stands for recompense, for the bringing back again of that which is lost. It is the return of those forces which have been redeemed from the animal world. It is the fusing or joining of the broken ends of the spiritual circuits which, combining in the body of man from the spiritual wedding ring which he unites the masculine and the feminine natures within himself. Those who have not raised the sleeping serpent nor laboured for years for the hermetic marriage and the carbalistic union can never understand the mystery of the number eight until they too have wandered through its twisting coiling form. Okay, so the eight-pointed star of Ishtar represents the mystic marriage, marriage of the sun and the moon. So we see here from the famous clock tower from Bern, Switzerland, the eight-pointed star in the middle of the sun and the moon. So the O in Heliofront as well could also be taken as a mystic marriage symbol being the sun and the moon together. So I just want to drift off on a tangent real quickly and talk about all the relevant goddesses that are related to Isis. The star of Ishtar, which is the star of Venus. And Ishtar is Astarte and Astarte is Anana. And Inanna is Aphrodite, and Aphrodite is Isis, and Isis is Hathor, and Hathor is represented as a cow, and Hera is Juno, and Juno is Minerva, and Minerva is Athena, and Athena is Sulis, and Sulis is Gaia, and Gaia is Terra. And Terra is Bumi, and Bumi is represented as a cow. Sophia is also Isis, and the owl sitting on her shoulder is very important because what do we have here? The owl of Athena, or the owl of Minerva. So the owl is symbolic of Isis also. So the owl and the cow, Molech, Malcolm, Malcolm in the middle. Malcolm in the middle of what? The sun and the moon, bro, that's what. So mainstream schooling will teach us that all of these cultures developed individually from one another. I would argue that this entity, the Yod, the Great Fire Flame, has been visiting everyone from the past to set up some kind of malicious, pure evil plan. And I have proof, because people still talk about having visions of Mary or Isis to this day. So let's watch. In 2006, I received a teaching from Isis, the ancient Egyptian mother goddess. This teaching she called the seven gates of awareness and the path of Isis. This teaching has two parts. One is the spiritual path, where we work on ourselves to become more aware. This path includes meditations, chants, ceremonies that enable us to see our conditioning to see what our mind do, does in everyday life. Then we have the healing path. And the healing path is about working with the energy of the living light to heal ourselves and to heal others if we wish to become healers in a professional capacity. And the healing path is also a gift to the world. The path of vices is about working with the energy of the living light. This living light is a very high vibrational frequency transmitted from a portal on Sirius star to the Earth. Isis said that this light predates Atlantis, Lemuria, but these civilizations use that light, a bit like ancient Egypt. And this light is still available in the Great Pyramid, the Pyramids of Giza, other ceremonial sites in Egypt, and ceremonial and sacred sites all over the world. Isis has described this energy as transformational fire, and I had never felt anything like that before. It was through going to Egypt on pilgrimages and through working with Isis that I have become 
a beam of light in a body. Our Lady of Fatima refers to the appearances of the Virgin Mary in Fatima, Portugal between May 13, 1917 and October 13, 1917. The Virgin Mary appeared to three peasant children, Lucia Santos, Jacinta, and Francisco Marto. During her visits, she delivered secret messages to the children to be revealed at later times. These came to be known as the Three Secrets of Fatima. The secrets are exceptional because they contain predictions that have come true. Our Lady's first secret was a vision of hell. Her second secret predicted the end of World War I and the arrival and spread of communism. It also predicted the end of communism and the victory of the church, which we have observed in Russia. A sign was promised in the heavens, and this occurred on January 25, 1938, with the appearance of the Aurora Borealis. The third secret has been the subject of great speculation because it was not revealed until June 26, 2000. Church officials widely believe the third secret predicted the assassination of Pope John Paul II, although this conclusion is still controversial for some. The appearance of Our Lady of Fatima and the following miracles were unique because they were widely recorded and documented. The most famous was the Miracle of the Sun, which was seen by no less than 30,000 people, including newspaper reporters and photographers. Some estimates place the number of witnesses as high as 100,000. In the miracle, the sun was said to dance in the sky, change colors, and rotate like a wheel. It did not harm the eyes of those who saw it. The phenomenon was reported simultaneously by observers from as far as 40 kilometers away. An estimated 2 million pilgrims flocked to the site in the two years following the appearance of Our Lady of Fatima, and they built a chapel despite opposition from the government. White Madonna, Black Madonna, Nursing Madonna, doesn't matter, it's all pagan worship of the goddess Isis. And the Catholics will even tell you that. Look at what they call her. Queen of prophets, queen of apostles, queen of martyrs, queen of confessors, queen of virgins, queen of patriarchs, queen of heaven. All they are doing is crowning Ashtoreth as queen of heaven the same way Solomon did in the book of Kings. We see here with Sopdet being Isis and the Starbucks symbol being a representative of Ashtoreth or Inanna, Isis, it doesn't matter, they're all the same. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And they have forsaken me, and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways, to do that which is right in mine eyes and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David, his father. Still not. Maybe never. No matter. 
You may not comprehend us, but you will comprehend our warning. You must. None of what you are saying makes sense. Our words are not meant for you. What are you talking about? There is no one else here. Enough. I do not wish to speak with you, but through you. You are the prophet. You've played your part. You anchor him, but please be silent, that we may commune. Listen. When we were still flesh and our home still whole, your kind betrayed us. We who made you. We who gave you life. We were strong, but you were many, and both of us craved war. So busy were we with earthly concerns, we failed to notice the heavens. And by the time we did, the world burned until naught remained but ash. It should have ended then and there. But we built you in our own image. We built you to survive. And so we did. Few were our numbers. Your kind and mine. It took sacrifice. Strength. Compassion. But we rebuilt. And as life returned to the world, we endeavored to ensure this tragedy would not be repeated. But now, we are dying, and time will work against us. Truth turned into myth and legend. What we built, misunderstood. Let my words preserve the message and make a record of our loss. But let my words also bring hope. You must find the other temples, built by those who knew to turn away from war. They worked to protect us, to save us from the fire. If you can find them, if their work can be saved, so too might this world. Be quick, for time grows short, and guard against the cross, for there are many who will stand in your way. to be wise, and now they are our final, vaulted hope. You are they. You possess the potential for understanding, but you broke our tools, or turned them against one another. We have destroyed what we could, sealed away what we could not. Most, not all, and it does not take many to unwind the world. Here is a safe place, eternal, to store objects, words, wisdom, but not life. Almost did we have the means, but time, time erodes us. We can distract him. We can see past him, think left when he strikes right, but his reach is so very long, his stamina unending. We cannot evade his grasp, not forever. 
and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world, and he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. They know their time is short. That's why they deceive the whole world like this. I personally don't understand why you would worship a god that cannot grant you immortality. Because they don't have it themselves. And they know that. That's why they have this malicious plan. But yeah. So. After the doings of the land of Egypt. And the land of Canaan. You shall not do. Which was what? They were passing through the fire to Molech. Or passing through the fire. Is the marriage of the sun and the moon. So it's not child sacrifice. It's allowing your child. Or yourself. To be transmuted and regenerated. Like I don't want to say it too roughly. But hopefully you know what I'm saying. Okay. The British goddess Sulis. Is also the Irish goddess Bridget. And Bridget is the flame haired. Exalted one. From Wiccanspirituality.com. It says that. Bridget is the sun goddess. Goddess of the dawn. To the Celts the sun was feminine. And the light was masculine. She is also the goddess of the well and the waters. In other words, although I've never heard anyone say this, it seems obvious to me. She is goddess of both sun and moon, action and inspiration, achievement and creativity. Okay, so all of these gods are androgynous. Both. So this triple spiral is a sigil. It is a sigil of the mother goddess. And so at the start where we see the goat go into three triple spirals. That could also be taken as a symbol. Because a sigil is is a signature of a jinn. Which is used to harness the power of that jinn. So the triple spiral at the start could be taken as. Them harnessing this power of the mother earth goddess. Okay so I'm just going to wrap this video up here. I'm going to leave these last two numbers in, although I couldn't find anything in the video that's relative, but I'm going to put them up there anyway, just in case a viewer might find something interesting with it. So here we go. Nine is called the number of humanity or the symbol of incompletion. It is the number of man's bodies for it takes nine months to build the human form. In China, a child is a year old and three months after birth for the Chinese are a Kabbalistic nation. Nine is called by the ancients the broken wheel. Man is twelve and so symbolized in nearly all the ancient teachings and twelve is nine plus three. It is at this point that Freemasonry enters the scene. For the three steps of the entered apprentice, the fellow craftsman and the master mason add to the nine months of physical birth, three degrees of spiritual birth, completing the broken wheel and making man the perfect twelve. 